Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing my RP2040 bare metal adventures. Last time I did a crash course on assembly, and we wrote our first assembly program to blink the LED on the Raspberry Pi Pico. That was a lot to cover, and the video got too long. I didn't have enough time to show how to actually compile and load the program. But this is a new video, so why don't you join me as we compile, link, install, and run our blink program on the Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm using the GNU assembler, which is part of the GNU compiler collection, or GCC. My host computer is a Windows 10 machine. For today, my interface between the host computer and the Pico is simply a micro USB cable. I'm not using any special debugging interface. There are several ways to get an assembly language program to run on the Pico. The following is a procedure that works for me and is relatively simple. To help understand where the assembler fits in with the GCC, let's do a quick tour of the compiling process. The GCC is designed to take a high-level language like C and compile it into an executable file that will run on the target system. There are a lot of moving parts, but here's the simplified version. First, the C program is run through a preprocessor, which includes the file specified in the C program, removes the comments, and add macros. The intermediate output is a .i file. Then the compiler takes the .i file and converts it into an assembly language file. First it analyzes the structure of the program, then it synthesizes assembly code, and finally optimizes that code. The output is a .s file. This is where our assembly language program enters the process. It has the same format and syntax as the output of the compiler. The assembler takes assembly language files and converts them into machine language. The output is a .o file. At this point, we probably have more than one machine language file. Each file could run within an area of memory, but most likely those areas would overlap. It's the job of the linker to allocate separate memory sections in the target machine to each machine language program and to link the calls from one program to another. In addition, the linker adds additional programs like library functions and a second stage bootloader to help get the programs into the proper location in flash memory and RAM. The generic linking process is fairly complex since each target machine has different memory maps. Fortunately, the Raspberry Pi Foundation has put together a C, C++ SDK that significantly simplifies the linking process. I've used the C, C++ SDK extensively during my PIO series. We can also use that SDK to process assembly language programs, since those programs have the same structure as the output of the high-level language compiler. Like everything, using the SDK for compiling assembly language programs involves a trade-off between memory requirements and ease of use. My experience is that the SDK needs to process at least one C program in conjunction with an assembly program to prevent errors. The C program can be very minimal, but it still uses additional memory. However, the compiling process is greatly simplified in exchange for using more memory. Using the SDK also provides me with access to input-output libraries that will make my life easier while I'm gaining experience. In the future, as I learn more about the compiling process, I might try bare-bones compiling, but for now, I'll stick with the convenience of using the SDK. For those used to the C, C++ SDK, compiling and linking the assembly programs is not that difficult. For our friends who use MicroPython exclusively on the Pico, I suggest you first get a little experience using C and the GNU toolchain before you try compiling and linking assembly language programs. You can refer to these videos to help you get started. I'm most comfortable using the developer command prompt for Visual Studio, Notepad++, and File Explorer to compile, link, and load programs to the Pico. I think the process is similar if you're using Visual Studio exclusively, but I'm not sure. First, I start by creating a directory for each project I'm working on, in this case, Demo1. Then I open Demo1 and create a subdirectory named Build. Although the name of the project file can be anything you want, the name of the build file must always be Build. Next, populate the project file. Copy the file pico sdk import.cmake 
from the Pico Examples folder and paste it into the project folder. Then copy over the cmakelist.txt, main.c, and assembly.s files from my GitHub page into the project folder. Simply open each file in GitHub, click on the raw button, then right click and save to the project file. I'll put a link in the description below. Assembly.s is the same file we created in the previous video. I'll put a link to that video in the description. The C program is about the shortest program you can make. It simply defines a function with the same name as the initial label of the assembly program, in this case, start. Then we initialize our main function, which simply calls the assembly program start. The third file is cmakelist.txt. The only thing that needs to be modified in this file is to make sure that ASM is included in the project statement and that the name of the assembly program is included in the add executable line. Change the name of the project if you wish. In the developer prompt, navigate into the build folder of the project. Then use the standard cmake-g nmake make files dot dot to create all the required rules for the make file process. Remember, if the CMake process fails for whatever reason, delete all the files in the build folder before you try CMake again. Note that you only have to run CMake one time unless we add additional program files to the project. Again, if you run CMake again for whatever reason, delete all the files in the build folder since there's a cache file that holds historical data that could cause errors. After CMake has successfully completed, run nmake. This actually compiles and links all the programs in the project. nmake must be run each time you make any changes to any of the programs in the project. The output will include a single UF2 file that can be loaded into the Pico in the usual way by pressing the boot select button while attaching the USB cable to the Pico and then dragging the UF2 file into the RPI RP2 folder. After a few moments, the LED starts blinking. Success! Thanks for joining me today. In this companion video to our first RP2040 assembly language program, I demonstrate how to compile, link, and load our assembly program into the Raspberry Pi Pico. In the future, I plan to dive deeper into the structure of the Pico and to create more complex assembly language programs. We're just getting started in our bare metal adventure, so stay tuned! If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!